Hey guys, so happy Sunday. It's actually the day before this video is supposed to go up. Um, I was contemplating not publishing it because I realized that it seems a little odd and I wanted to come on here and make a disclaimer that in no way am I promoting to you guys that you should disregard the social distancing. I'm taking it very, very seriously. These particular clips were filmed a while ago and things have changed more so than at that period of time. And so I really want you to understand that in no way am I telling you to just go out and disregard the recommendations. Even at that particular time, I went to the store, I went to Walgreens, as you'll see. I needed to get something for our friends, so I went there early when it first opened to avoid crowds. And I just wanna emphasize that to you guys, that I am taking it very seriously and I'm not just carrying on with blatant disregard for the well-being of others. And so many of you understand that who watch my videos that they're filmed in advance, but for those of you who are new, enjoy the content, but do know that uh, this was filmed a while ago, so enjoy. Happy Sunday, I'm here in Walgreens. I need to pick up a few items um, and I thought I would peruse. So yesterday I was talking about the double cleanse method. This is a great product to consider for the second step of the double cleanse method um, and just do it all in the shower, face and body. When it says pH balance, it just means that it's probably pHed around 5.56, which is better for the skin barrier. Anything higher than 6.5 can, can and is destructive on the acid mantle. Anyways, yeah, this is a good one to consider. Does this have ceramides in it? Uh, sometimes they do put ceramides in it. No, they don't. Um, yeah, this is a good one. And you guys asked me a fair amount about removing sunscreen from the body. Uh, like, should you do the double cleanse too? You, you certainly can. And it's actually a very efficient and helpful way to remove water-resistant sunscreen from your body just to use a... Uh, oil-based cleanser on the body as well similar to, to how I was telling you guys yesterday on the face and then just wash it off with a gentle body wash like this you could use uh, just plain mineral oil or the Neutrogena body oil fragrance free this is a great one to consider and uh, it's nice as opposed to a um, as opposed to just using sesame oil which is what is in this this has uh, polyethylene glycol in it, so it will help to uh, allow the formulation to actually rinse off. It's an emulsifier, so yeah, this is a good one. You can you also put this on your face as well, just a few drops. The Skin Calming Body Wash is a little bit more oily. It um, would also be effective probably by itself, honestly, although I've never tried it, for removing, for removing water-resistant sunscreen because it is pretty oily but it can make a slippery mess all over your shower uh, when you try and put it on your body in the shower. That's kind of why I like doing the lather, lather up your body or the body surfaces that have the water resistant sunscreen on them. Because let's face it, like unless you're outdoors in a bikini, you're probably only putting sunscreen on your body in certain sun, on the sun exposed areas. So really you just need to lather the, the emollient or the oil to those areas before getting in the shower. I think that's a better way to do it. A, you use less product and B, you don't make this slippery oily mess all over. Yeah, some, some of the, the oil that you put on your body before you get in the shower is obviously going to rinse off and go on the floor, but it's just less overall, less risky. Be careful though, overall. Yeah, this is a good one. You know, I've talked about how castor seed oil is a potential source of contact dermatitis, as are gallates. There's no product, though, aside from just plain water or uh, petrolatum, 100% petrolatum, or um, hyaluronic acid, or water. Those are, those are some exceptions, but pretty much anything that has anything else in it. I'm trying to think of other ingredients 
for which they're like zero to no risk of contact or hematitis. What I'm getting at is there's no foolproof product. And you guys always want to know like what's a good product that won't break me out. That's like uh, maybe if I had a crystal ball, I could predict that. There's no list of ingredients that predicts that. It's very individualized. In the majority of cases, I mean, acne flares regardless of uh, product use. And so nailing down a certain ingredient profile that's going to not flare acne, it's, it's a shot in the dark. There's no such thing. Now, Cetaphil, you have to be careful. They have a lot of products that are labeled fragrance-free, but they put masking fragrance in, in them, which is typically labeled unscented, but I think... I think Cetaphil sometimes sneaks in the words fragrance free. So I'm looking at their body wash. I don't typically recommend this one because it's just not one in my brain space. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I typically recommend CeraVe body washes or Eucerin body washes. But, uh, because I'm never sure about the other ones, if they're going to have fragrance or not. But it looks like this one by Cetaphil does not. Um, comment below and if you guys have used the Ultra Gentle Body Wash Fragrance Free, how it went. My recommendation for using body washes, don't, don't go, people just over soap their skin. They over lather, they get so excited with that soapy lather and they just desiccate the stratum corneum and dissolve the lipids and amino acids in the stratum corneum in the top layer of skin. Just focus a small amount to the armpits groin or visibly soiled areas I mean if you sit in an office you're not you're not filthy if you work outdoors uh, whatnot then yeah you, you need to use more to more surface area but I mean be prudent we're um we're just making uh, Procter and Gamble and the soap companies <laughs> ridiculously wealthy I mean you look look at all of the selection here of, of sudsy lather in this quote-unquote limited stock now, I was talking about colloidal oatmeal yesterday in yesterday's video when I was reviewing the um, Hanky List Oat Cleansing Balm. Here you've got Aveeno, these little packets. I love these. You can just reconstitute a little bit of this in water and use that as a lather. People always want to know about saving it. I don't recommend doing that. Just, I mean, you can make it up and put it in your fridge and keep it for a few days, but I wouldn't use it beyond that just because there's no preservatives and you've got water in there so it can become contaminated so you know i recommend just using a small amount as in a limited amount but if you are using something like this more regularly as part of your skincare routine that does become a little bit time intensive reconstituting it each time and uh, kind of challenging but yeah Long story short, check out my video on colloidal oatmeal. It's got a ton of great benefits. Really cost-effective uh, skincare product overall. Colloidal oatmeal, though, differs from just, if you were to go in your kitchen and grind up oatmeal and make oat flour and use it, it's different. It's a specific part particulate size and it's been filtered and everything, so. Oh, Mederma, I don't recommend this. It's got onion extract. There was actually a study looking at onion extract for scars um, in the lab, I think, and it kind of suggested that it might be beneficial, but it, other, other actual studies show that it's irritating. Plus, this has fragrance in it. Um, one of the best ingredients for scars, like probably the best, aside from, from tretinoin, uh, the best ingredient for, especially early stage wound healing and, you know, improving the ultimate appearance of your scar is uh, silicone. Silicone impregnated scar sheets or silicon gels. Yesterday, in yesterday's video, I was talking about Vaseline on your hands. Vaseline brand of 100% white petrolatum. Make sure you get the one that says 100% white petrolatum because some of these other ones have fragrance. And I'm gonna guarantee the creme brulee one has fragrance. <laughs> Creme brulee really had its uh, heyday back in the 80s. It was like, I don't know, it's some trendy food nowadays. Any any trendy food that was that was a that was a creme brulee back then. And uh, creme brulee and the other one, baked Alaska. That's a really complicated dessert for restaurants to prepare. Neutrogena has launched some new serums. They've got this rice protein serum. This is its uh, intended to mattify and to be put on before makeup. But uh, rice proteins, they, they make nice humectants. Does this have silicones in, the, in it? That typically helps mattify things. I'm not seeing any. 
I'm not sure what it is about this that makes it mattifying. I suppose the uh, pentylene glycol makes it a little drying. But they also came out with a they also came out with a hyaluronic acid serum. If your makeup's like really drying, I suppose putting this on immediately before your makeup would help that. But now the Radiant Primer Serum has peptides in it, which are wonderful humectants as well, and potentially might help uh, guide some collagen production, but that's very theoretical. So it's got that good humectant for hydrating the skin, and it's also got iron oxides, which will give you a little bit of protection from visible light. It does have yellow dyes in, in it, yellow dye in it. Sometimes yellow dyes have been associated with acne, but uh, that's, again, not a 100% guarantee that's going to be an issue for you. These look promising. Comment below if you've tried them, this whole new radiant line they've got. I don't recommend, I've talked about this before, the setting spray. That has perfume in it, and these can be very drying and irritating, so I don't recommend that. So a lash serum like this that has peptides in it, what this is going to do is kind of act like a conditioner for the eyelashes. And almost like, same, same way conditioners work. They kind of fill in uh, little porosities and things on the hair shaft. Same thing on your eyelashes, kind of build them up a little bit. But whether or not that ultimately keeps your lashes healthier, hard to say. I suppose a potential risk outside of the obvious, which would be contact dermatitis, a potential risk with something like this is it actually ends up weighing down your eyelashes and causing breakage. And Latisse, which we know works, definitely can cause some irritation, definitely causes irritation. It's a common side effect with Latisse, and it also can alter iris pigmentation. So whether or not this does that, I mean, when, when it's a cosmeceutical like this and it's not regulated, we don't have any any way of tracking that kind of stuff. And uh, it becomes very difficult to predict the, that with these kinds of things. What the flip did they put in their lip plumping serum? Please tell me they didn't put fragrance in this. This actually seems okay. It doesn't appear to have any added fragrance. And a lot of times when I see lip plumping, I get real scared because they often put um, irritants in these plumping things. Oh, it does have fragrance. It's got vanilla in it. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, these often have like fragrance and irritants in them. And the irritants, because of the irritation, it causes edema and swelling. And you're like, ooh, plumping. But yeah, that's not good. It's kind of like punching yourself in the face instead of getting filler. I can't tell if Neutrogena just changed the packaging on these moisturizers or if it's, and it's the same thing that I, I've, I've got, I've got a copy of. I've got a version of this at home and I've reviewed it for you guys before, but I think they changed the packaging. I can't remember what that was called, but it had different packaging. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. But it looks like they have a few shades here. Sheer tan, sheer fair, and sheer ivory. These don't look like they would work for darker skin types. But their Radiant Cream Concealer, they're giving a nice spectrum of shades here for their concealer. That's good. Now, the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup, this is a decent option for a um, foundation. However, if you just rely on this as your sunscreen, you're shortchanging yourself a bit on UVA because the only ingredient in this is titanium dioxide. It's not as broad spectrum as zinc into the UVA range. It will protect you against UVA, don't get me wrong. That's why they can call it broad spectrum, but it's not as broad as, as zinc. So you're shortchanging yourself a little bit, plus this is only SPF 20, and let's face it, you're you're not going to put this on at a density to ever achieve SPF 20. So you don't rely on this. And the antioxidant blend thing, that... Uh, the antioxidants aren't going to get into your skin in a formulation like this because it's going to make a film on the surface of your skin. And it's not like it's going to be um, something that's actually going to be able to, the antioxidants aren't going to be able to get into your skin in a product like this. Makeup remover eraser stick. This is competing with Mr. Clean. <laughs> oh, they want me to peel off the label. I hate it when they do this. It's almost like figure out what we're dealing with in this stick. I always feel kind of bad doing this too, like I'm ruining it for someone else. Like they should just have a, it's too stubborn. I don't want to do it.
Well, somebody's been snoozing. Downward dog. Taking a nap, and now you're ready for Rosie. Whenever the camera comes on, he thinks it's time to play. I'm not camera ready. You've got to give me some warning. I've got to put my face on. Hey, guys. I'm here at my mom's. A little bit different schedule today. We're both trying to avoid crowds, as recommended. And uh, so, yeah, I just got up early this morning, and I had to get some things at Walgreens, so I wanted to get in there before it got crowded. But um, I did put my sunscreen on before I left for Walgreens this morning, uh, the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer. I put this on, uh, I put sunscreen on when I first wake up in the morning as part of my skincare routine, and then I reapply it mid-morning or early afternoon as my second application because it rubs off. But typically, when I start the vlogs on Sunday, you're seeing my second application of the day in the car. And I typically, at that point, in the car, that is about three-ish hours after my first application. And I like doing it in the car because I like starting the vlog that way. So you guys maybe are reminded to put your sunscreen on and you can see me. And I wash my hands before I get in the car, so my hands are clean, but... The place where I'm typically at, there are no windows, so it would be really hard to see me applying the sunscreen, and there are a lot of people around, so that's why I don't film the sunscreen application inside at that point. But anyways, today is obviously different, so I'm here at my mom's, and uh, what you doing there? Oh, just catching up on a little bit of business. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Somebody has just... Yeah. Taken over as usual. Guilty! Guilty ladies! It looks like we're running a doggy daycare. You guys, Tybee has developed a new habit that is interesting. You know, he loves his fruits bananas, pears, and he also loves peanuts. We're not allowed to eat any of these foods without giving him some in his presence. He gets really testy. See, even the suggestion he doesn't like. He's growling back there. But he's learned a new skill. He will start stomping his hind foot whenever one of us eats a banana, pear, or peanut <laughs> until we give him one. I don't know where he learned this. <laughs> what are you growling at? And he knows when we get a banana. I don't know how he knows. Yeah, he can, he, he'll be asleep and he, he's like the banana whisperer. He can hear it being removed from from the bunch. So my mom has requested that I make uh, a variation of my little Odie bars that I've really been into. I typically put, as I've shown in other videos, the peanut flour in this recipe along with rolled oats, but she doesn't have that here. So I just have in this bowl four cups of whole rolled oats uh, and I put in mm, a liberal dusting of ground cinnamon. And then this is just some water, uh, chia seeds, applesauce, and this I don't have at home currently and I love, I should get some. It's really good in recipes. This unsulfured molasses blackstrap plantation. I get this on Amazon. It has like 20% of your daily iron in it, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, that, oh, and then um, a big heaping spoonful of nutso. This stuff's really good. You can get it at Costco. It's a combination of cashews, almonds, Brazil nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, hazelnuts, pumpkin, and Celtic sea salt. Really good. They have a variety of different flavors, but I think I've only ever had this one. Have you had any of the other nutso flavors? They've got like a chocolate one. Uh, no, I haven't. I'm pretty much addicted to that one. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I just mix that into that, and then I, my mom has one of these gas. I know we don't typically use stuff like this, but we had it, and she wants to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, I layer, I put half of the mixture in here, and then I layer on top some uh, mashed up bare apple chips, and then I layer the rest on top, and I bake it at 350 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour. Hi, 
All right, so I just put half of the mixture on the bottom of the pan. And now I'm just gonna take these bare apple chips, crush them up. You can use any kind of fruit in this. The dehydrated, the desiccated fruits, the dehydrated ones, they they work well because they stay a little firm and they get kind of a nice texture, but bananas work really well too. Fresh bananas, they get kind of caramel, they get like caramelized and gooey. It's quite good. All right, and now I've just put the remaining batter on top and it's gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees. Or, I think I'm gonna do an hour and 20 minutes since it's a pretty big pan. All right, so the apple bars are out and they've cooled and I just cut one here. You can also put nut butter on them if you like. Tybee's excited about apples. <laughs> he loves his fruits and veggies. Anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed the little Walgreens shop around with me video today and the remainder of the vlog. I hope you guys are having a good weekend and Staying healthy and happy, most important thing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and, subscribe. and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Have a great week, everybody.